Hey everybody, welcome back to the fifth and final part of our Character Creator to Unreal tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial, we're finally going to get to move our character around. We're going to be using things such as uh, blend spaces and uh, animation blueprints. Now, just as a preface here, if you're unfamiliar with these sort of tools, uh, I'd really recommend checking out Unreal's uh, YouTube channel. They have a great series of tutorials that explain these really in a lot of detail and at a good pace. Um, they've done an excellent job on uh, creating those tutorials. I'll provide a link in the description below. So if you're unfamiliar with these sort of concepts, I'd really recommend checking them out. I believe Zach over at Unreal has uh, produced those tutorials and uh, has done a great job. So let's go ahead and start with our animations in this tutorial though. What we're going to do, I've created an animations folder here in my main content uh, folder. And what we're going to do is import in the animations that we previously created. So let's go over to import. And I'm in the temp motions folder here. I'm just going to shift and select all of my motions and go ahead and open that up. Now these import options are important. The first thing we need to do is select our skeleton. So we'll select our skeleton, Tomb Lady skeleton right there. And we don't need to import the mesh because we did that in the previous tutorial. All we need to do is deselect that. And then for animation length, we need to change it from exported time to animated time. And then select import all. And that's going to import in all of our motions. And once we're finished importing these in, we're going to create what's called a blend space. And this allows us to blend uh, between different motions, uh, basically according to certain property values that we're going to be uh, receiving. So uh, once we're finished with this, then we can uh, preview them all in our blend space. Um, you can see them appear right here in the animations folder. So let's go ahead and I'm going to right click now and I'm going to go into animation and create a blend space 1D. We need to select our Tomb Lady skeleton and we'll call it CC underscore blend, just like that. Uh, CC for character creator, of course. And so let's double click on our blend space. Now in our blend space, we have uh, all of our motions uh, on the side here. We can uh, preview them simply by uh, double clicking them. There's our uh, taunt and our uh, sprint and everything. Let's go back to our CC blend. We'll double click on that. And I'm going to display editor vertically because it'll be a little bit uh, easier to explain. So we have these uh, values on the x-axis between 0 and 100. And that's basically determined uh, by the speed. So we're going to label this x-axis, we're going to call it speed. So we want to basically create a certain animation, have our character display a certain animation when she is idle, or when she is at a speed of 0, which will be idle. So let's take this idle motion right here, and we'll click and drag it down to the very bottom. So at a speed value of 0, our character will be idling. And if we zoom in a bit, you can probably see a better look at our character uh, idling. We'll just uh, click off there. There you go. And uh, then what we want to do is we want to create a walking motion as well. Uh, probably at about 25 or 50. doesn't really matter. We can just take this walking animation then and drag it to about the 25 point right there. And then our character begins walking. And that's because our mouse is at a value at above 25. If we go down further, she'll slowly transition in back into the idle motion right here. We can go back into the walk. So that's basically what a blend space is all about. Some really cool options for, uh, you know, blending motions together. A really useful tool. So let's go ahead and bring in the sprint as well. We'll bring in the sprint at a value of about uh, 75. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can always change these, change these later. And you can see now we're blending from the walk into the sprint. Slowly blending in and slowly going back walking and then going to the idle. All right, so these are, you know, useful obviously for things like the PlayStation or the Xbox that have the uh, little joysticks where you can, they're pressure sensitive and stuff. But let's go ahead and just work with this. We've labeled our x-axis speed. We have these three motions and that's basically it for our blend space. We'll go ahead and save it and exit out. The next thing we want to do is we want to create an animation blueprint for our character. So I'm going to right click in the same uh, folder and go to animation and animation blueprint and we're going to choose that anim instance up there and we need to find our tomb lady skeleton whoops right there and we'll go ahead and press ok we'll call this cc underscore abp maybe for animation blueprint for lack of a better term and we're going to double click in here and open up the animation blueprint and in the animation blueprint we have our anim graph and our event graph uh, the Anim Graph basically has uh, animation nodes that sample animation sequences, they perform blends, uh, they control uh, bone transform and all that stuff. What we're going to do in this case is in our Anim Graph, the first thing we're going to do is create a state machine. So I'm going to right click in the animation uh, graph and just type in state machine and it'll pop up with that add new state machine. 
and we can pipe this into the final animation pose. This is going to be the final output. And in our state machine, we'll just, uh, we can rename it something like locomotion because this is going to be for our character's movement. And I'm going to double click to go inside the state machine. Now in the state machine, what we want to do is find some assets in our asset browser. The first thing we want to find is our CC blend, which is the blend space that we created earlier, as if you can recall. So we'll take that and drag it. We'll call this idle underscore walk underscore uh, sprint. There we go. And then we want to pipe in the entry to the idle walk and sprint. Now we want to do one more thing. We want to have our uh, perform motion over here as well, which is our taunt. So let's click and drag that taunt in as well. And let's we'll call this perform. We can call it whatever we want, really. But this is basically what we want to uh, have in our state machine. And we want to click and drag a condition from the idle to the uh, perform, and then click and drag one back. Now what we want to do here is we want to double click on this transition from idle walk and sprint to our perform. So when does our character do the perform, uh, do the taunt? Uh, let's go ahead and right click this result here and promote it to a variable. And let's call this variable, uh, we can call it anything really, but let's call it press one key because that's what we're going to have. Uh, we're going to press the one key and our character is going to be doing the taunt later on. So basically if the one key is pressed, then it's going to result uh, let's close this down in the perform. That's the transition from here to here. And then if the one key is not pressed, we have to have a return condition as well. So let's double click here. Let's take that press one key in there. We need to uh, get the variable. And then we want to pipe this into a not Boolean. So let's just type in not right here. So if the button is not pressed, then we're going to um, return back to the idle walk and sprint state right here. So let's go ahead and compile this and we can uh, give it a save right here. And you can see now we have this uh, under our animation preview, we have this press one key. So if we press the one key, our character is going to do the taunt right here and do the stretch and let's get it on like that. All right, so that's our uh, preview right there. What we can do now is I'm going to double click and go into the idle walk and sprint. And now we need to create our variable called speed. So in our CC blend right here, let's right click and promote to variable. And here we're going to enter in our, uh, whoops, variable right here. Let's just call it speed, speed right there. All right, so speed is going to determine obviously what if our character is idling, walking, or running. So let's give this a compile again. And now we have an option for speed and we can change the value of our speed, you know, from uh, go up to 25, I think was walking. So 25 would be the walking value right there. And then we can click and drag up to 50 and she'll start running. And then we can return back to the idle pose right here. Begins walking and full sprint. All right, so we've basically done all our variable stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, close this down now. And our locomotion, our state machine is pretty much all finished. That's all we really need to do for our anim graph. The next thing we wanna do, let's just change this back to a value of zero so she stops walking in slow motion there. The next thing we want to do is get our event graph working. Now the event graph is used to update values used by the blend spaces. And it uh, basically processes data, updates the variables like I mentioned, uh, based on the character input. So the character being you. So what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to run through this. This is pretty complicated, a lot more complicated than I have time to explain in this tutorial. But what we're going to do is basically just go ahead and drag from our event blueprint update animation. So this is kind of like our update. And I'm going to create an is valid check right there. And after the is valid check, we need to pipe this into a set speed. Uh, so if it is valid, we need to set and whoops, and then speed. So we have the speed variable. We can also click, click and drag in the speed variable from the bottom there as well. All right, and the next thing I wanna do is also get this pawn owner thing. The target is the anim instance. We're going to return the value and we're gonna pipe that into our input object. So that really checks what character is being used in our game and it pipes it into that is valid check. All right, and then let's go from here. Let's also create another uh, connection and we're going to get the velocity uh, of our character. So the velocity is basically, a, it's a vector which is uh, the, the direction and the magnitude. So that's going to determine obviously the this, this speed uh, value. It's gonna pipe it into here. And let's go from return value and let's 
create a vector length as well. So vector length is basically, it represents the speed uh, of the velocity. Uh, so this is the speed value. And again, I'm really just speeding through this. Uh, the uh, Unreal tutorials go, go into a lot more detail, so I'd recommend checking them out if you're interested in what's going on behind the scenes here. So let's go ahead and uh, go from the vector length, and we're going to create a float value for the speed. So we can just use float times float right here. And then we will uh, pipe that into the speed value, uh, the set speed right there. All right, so it creates a uh, value, and that's going to be set, the set speed right here. And then what I want to do is also get the player controller. So I'm going to right click here and select get player controller right there. Okay. And from get player controller, this is basically our uh, pressing the one key uh, function right here. So we're going to take from return value and we're going to select is input key down. So our input key, if you can recall, is the number one. So we need to change it from mouse X go into here and go into our keyboard and press the number one key. So that's the press one key. And then from here, we can click and drag and we want to set the press one key uh, variable right here. All right, there we go. So that's the one key variable. And we can also just, uh, I mean, the last thing we want to do is link up the set output from the uh, set speed into the uh, press one key right there. And that's basically our event graph right there um, that we need to do. So we can just go ahead and compile it, make sure everything is okay. We see some uh, red lava pumping through to the is valid check right there. Let's go ahead and just uh, save that for now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create uh, an event, a graph for our camera. So to do that, we need to just go ahead and close down the animation blueprint for the character now. And we're going to create a character blueprint now. So the character blueprint is basically going to be controlling the camera and a lot about our controls, uh, our actual input controls. Now, before we do this, I want to go up to settings here and I want to make sure that everyone uh, is on board. So we'll go to project settings and we need to go to input here. Uh, you need to have these move forward, move right, turn right uh, inputs under your axis mappings. These come default with the uh, third person default project with the Unreal uh, that comes with Unreal. Uh, if you don't have it, you can open up that project and export it uh, to a file, and then you can re-import it. So if I wanted to import these values, I can do that again by going to import. I think I have them saved somewhere on the desktop. So if you have a chance, go to import and then uh, temp. Yeah, this is where I saved them. So the input backup right here, you can just uh, import that file right there, and it should uh, load up this sort of stuff. Again, you have to export that from the default third-person project in Unreal. So make sure you have all these. Uh, move forward and... These are the uh, key inputs and the scale values that uh, result. Again, there's a special tutorial that uh, Unreal has dedicated to this, so we won't spend too much time on it. And I'll just close it down. So what I want to do now, again, like I mentioned, is create my character blueprint. So I'm going to right click and create basic asset blueprint class. And here we want to create a character blueprint. So let's just call this uh, CC underscore maybe CBP. I know my names are pretty boring, but there we have our character blueprint right there. And you can see a little mannequin uh, on the icon. So let's just double click that. And we're set up with a uh, physics collision sphere right here, uh, capsule, whatever you want to call it. Let's go to our mesh uh, option right here under the components. And we want to set a mesh. And so let's go over to skeletal mesh and find our character, the tomb lady right here. So there's our tomb lady. And we want to also make her use the animation blueprint that we created. So let's go to uh, use animation blueprint. And we need to find the CC ABP animation blueprint right there. And our character will begin to go into her idle state, which is pretty cool. We have her already um, idling at least. But we need to position her correctly within this um, collision space right here. So let's bring her down uh, to, I think the value I used before was negative 82. So let's choose negative 82. And we also need to rotate her to negative 90 degrees. So she's facing the direction of this blue arrow here. So let's go ahead and enter in that value of negative 90 right there. All right, so our character is uh, good to go. The physics collision shape looks A-OK. -okay. And that's basically it for the character. Let's go ahead and create a spring arm for our camera now. So I'm going to go up to Add Component and type in spring arm. And this is just a component of the camera that uh, allows it to uh, 
not collide into stuff. Uh, you can see the description right there if you want to read it when you have time. Let's go ahead and create another component, add another component. This one's going to be the camera. So we'll just select the camera. And I want to parent my camera to my spring arm. So I'm going to click and drag it onto the spring arm right there. And then with the camera selected, I can compile it uh, right there. And we want to position our camera. Uh, so in this case, I know it's not really practical for game purposes, but we're going to uh, take our spring arm and camera and we can just uh, move it forward like this. Uh, we can actually just uh, rotate it completely around since this is the axis here. So we're going to get a front view of our character. So let's just rotate it. I'm using the E and W hotkeys here, just like in iClone, by the way. And we'll get sort of a up and above view right here, maybe 20 degrees up. And let's take it in a little closer, a little bit higher. All right, I think that should be fine. And that's going to be our, uh, you know, camera perspective. We can always change that later. So again, we can, you know, recompile that. It looks fine. And go to our event graph. Now we're almost done. This is where we're going to do our uh, basically camera controls and stuff. So I'm going to just actually take all these and I'm going to delete them all. And what I want to do is the first thing is right click and get control rotation. Oops, I typed in two L's there. Control rotation. There we go. Add the pawn right here. So once I have that, I'm going to break the control rotation up into three different parts. So we're going to break rotation right here. And now we have pitch, yaw, and roll. And we're going to just take from the yaw and we're going to make rotation. There we go. And I'm going to hold alt and click here to disconnect these two. And click and drag from yaw to yaw because yaw, after all, is yaw. Yaw is kind of like moving from left to right. Uh, well, kind of um, orbiting your view from left to right. Pitch is up and down and roll is, you know, when you're rolling. Um, you can probably take a look on Wikipedia and, or any game site and learn more about pitch, yaw, and roll. We're going to talk more about those later. But uh, what I want to do now is, from make rotation, I want to click and drag, and we want to get our forward vector. Get forward vector right there. Uh, it's really convenient. You can just kind of type this stuff in. Uh, these graphs are sort of like visual programming, so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, again, most of our iPhone users are probably not programmers, or they may be. I uh, don't want to miss anyone out there, but... This may be easier for some than others. And again, you can always check out the Unreal tutorials for more detail. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is right click and input axis. So this is the axis that we had earlier, that we that I showed earlier, and move forward. Now we want, we want to use the axis event, not the axis values right here. So input axis, move forward. And I want to click and drag that into add movement input. Input, there we go. And this forward vector, we're also going to pipe this uh, return value from the forward vector into the uh, corresponding world direction uh, input there. And then we want two more uh, things here. Just we're, just going to, we're basically creating a very, very simplistic uh, control. So I'm going to right click and input axis turn, which is another one you saw earlier. Uh, axis turn right there. And let's click and drag uh, from this, add controller. This one is the yaw input. So like I mentioned before, like you see up here, the yaw input. And I also want to take the axis value to the value slot right there. And we should be good to go. We can compile, whoops, you can compile to make sure that uh, everything's good to go. It even says good to go, awesome. All right, we can save that. And finally, what we want to do is create our uh, game mode blueprint class. So let's uh, go out of here now and let's right click and go to blueprint class again and we need to create a game mode. So we can just call this uh, CC underscore game mode. I'm being super original with the naming here. So let's double click on this game mode right here. And what I want to do is from default pawn class, I want to select the uh, character uh, blueprint that I created before. So we'll just select that. And that's pretty much all we need to do in our uh, game mode blueprint. And then we'll go ahead and compile it. Everything's good and we'll save it and exit out. And basically the character that we have on the screen right now, we don't actually need this uh, character mesh on the screen, so we can just take her and delete her. And we're pretty much good to go with one exception. If we go over to uh, world settings over here on the left hand or on the right hand side, I'm missing my sides up here, uh, for game mode override, what I want to choose is uh, go from none and choose CC game mode. And then we're pretty much good to go. I can go ahead and test it out, press play. You can see our character idling. We can uh, move the camera around like this. Uh, 
back and forth. And if I press forward and backward, it doesn't seem to be working. So let's exit out of this right now. And I'm going to go into my uh, camera blueprint right here. And let's take a look at our, uh, we can actually connect the axis and move forward, this axis value uh, to the scale value there. That should allow us to uh, move forward. So let's go ahead and uh, compile and save that and give it one more run. And our walking uh, seems to be having an issue as well. So we can kind of float across the uh, stage right here. Let's ex exit that. And this time let's check out our animation blueprint. So in animation blueprint, um, it looks like we're getting, uh, we need to put a value of 0 0.5 in our uh, float value for speed here. So we're going to set it at 0 0.5 and that's going to allow us to have a running motion. So let's go ahead and save that, close it down. And now let's give that one more shot. Let's play it and uh, see what happens. So now we're able to run across our scene like this. Our character is running pretty fast. Uh, pretty cool. We have our, whoops, we just kind of went through the uh, stage there. I didn't entirely have a good, uh, physics setting on the uh, on the ground here so our character might run through the floor in certain spots. Uh, anyways, this is how you can control your character. And we can even do the, uh, we can press the one key and what will happen is we will do our animation. There's our facial animation, the taunt, let's get it on, she says, and just uh, stretching like that along with the facial expression. Now, if we wanted our character to uh, say just walk for the entire time instead of running, we can go ahead and try a quick experiment by, uh, you know, double clicking the CC blend right here, our uh, blend space. And we can uh, just select our uh, motion right there, our sprint motion by clicking it, left clicking it and deleting it. Now, no matter how fast our speed value is, our character will be walking the entire time. So let's give that a save and exit and play it one more time. And you can see now our character will walk. Um, she's walking pretty fast though it's a little bit uh, faster than a person would normally walk. So let's go ahead and try one more thing. Let's uh, go back into our uh, character blueprint here. And in character blueprint, what I want to do is I want to right click and get my character moving here. So let's type in get character and we can see get character movement right there. So what we want to do is we want to, from this, we want to set our maximum walk speed. So we can just click and drag and then set max walk speed. There we go. It's highlighted right there. And then what I want to do is pipe our uh, input axis, move forward into the uh, set walk speed right here. And then we can then pipe this into our add movement input. And now we're going to set our walk speed. We can set it to something like um, the value I had before was about 75. And we'll just uh, press OK and compile and give that a save. And let's press uh, play now and see what happens when we move forward. So now you can see our character is moving forward at a pretty slow pace. Um, you know, we can pipe, pipe that up to 100. Let's give that a shot really quick, actually. So in our uh, camera blueprint, let's pipe that value up to, uh, pump that value, rather, up to 100. And uh, save and compile again. And we'll press play. And our character should be walking a little bit faster. That's a little bit more reasonable for a walking motion right there. And then we can press the one key and have our character uh, stretch like that. Now, the one last thing I want to do here is because we have our character stretching, we don't actually have any... Um, you know, uh, sound playing when our character is stretching. So if we wanted to import that sound into our Unreal project, it's actually really easy to do. All we need to do is just double click on our uh, taunt motion right here. And you can see our taunt motion starts playing. Now, at what point we want to play a motion, we want to maybe, whoops, let's go to our timeline right here. Let's scrub through. At about here, we want our character to start yawning. Now, before we do this, we have to exit out. We have to import in the audio files that we want to play. So let's go ahead and select import. I actually have them saved on the desktop here. We have female yawn and let's get it on whisper again. Let's press OK. There's our two audio files. So then again, we can go back into the uh, taunt one more time. And at the point where our character is yawning, so uh, when she starts yawning, like uh, let's zoom in on her mouth here so we can see a little bit better. There we go. So at this point right here where she's yawning, we want to start the audio file right there. So let's right click up here and I'm going to select add notify. And all you need to do is just select play sound and then click on the sound. And over here, all we need to do is in the sound uh, menu there, just select the sound that you want to play. So it'll be female yawn in this case. And now if we play back, <sighs> there's our sound playing in Unreal. And so then we want to add the other one, so the let's get it on taunt. So it starts about here. So she starts with uh, let's right here. 
And then we want to again right click at that point over here, over here in the notifies, add notify, play sound. One more sound. Let's click on this sound and choose a sound. Let's choose that. Let's get it on. And let's give this a playback and see on. what happens. So playback right here. Let's get it on. All right. Perfect. All right. So that's basically how you can just play your sounds uh, as part of your motion. Really easy to do. So let's go ahead and save this and close out. Let's play back one more time. So we have our character again, just casually, you know, walking through this stage. And then we can have, uh, let's get her where she's kind of facing the light a little bit. There we go. And press the one hot key. <sighs> Let's get it on. All right. And then we can continue walking and uh, walk right off the plank. So that about wraps it up for this tutorial series. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for watching. And hopefully you learned a lot about how to take your uh, creature character, creator characters, um, create some animations within iClone import them into Unreal and get some animation done. And again, I know I went through this uh, tutorial here at the speed of light. There's a lot of important concepts that you need to learn. But um, basically, that's about it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and you can also email us and check out our website as well. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.